Welcome uh, to the Heart Center in Leipzig. Uh, my name is Frederick Moore. It's a great pleasure for me to um, discuss together with you the um, uh, specific experience about uh, the treatment of HOCM, um, especially uh, addressing the transmitral approach, which I had <coughs> Uh, some experience with uh, during the past years uh, uh, looking at uh, different techniques. The first um, video presentation um, shows a typical case who uh, presented himself as a severe HOCM um, and um, the um, malalignment of the mitral valve in this case um, was typical uh, causing a severe SEM uh, which is well documented first in the uh, um, MRI, uh, where the uh, anterior leaflet of the um, mitral valve was uh, too closely attached to the severe hypertrophy of the left ventricle. In my eyes, in this case, from the very beginning, it was a young patient, the, the malalignment of this mitral valve um, but also very, very well, well documented in the transophageal echo is the cause of um, the uh, LVOT obstruction and secondly um, was uh, the cause uh, for the uh, developing and uh, progressive hypertrophy of the left ventricle. The um, uh, 2D echo very well documents um, the same phenomenon into the LVOT, uh, which only na almost 90% obstructs the LVOT far beyond um, uh, in the LVOT. Uh, the pathology and the symptoms of uh, hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy is uh, well described, and if you can look at the paper of Dr. Pfeiffer at Circulation in 2008. Um, it describes well the septal bulging of the mitral valve into the, into the LVOT, a mild position of the anterior papillary muscle, uh, and you also define the left ventricular contraction and the drag forces of the left ventricle, ventricle um, um, on the mitral valve, causing a venturi effect uh, at the level subvalvular. Patient presents himself with dyspnea angina, dizziness, and sometimes they develop um, uh, Adam Stoke um, <coughs> situations. The, uh, the surgical principles of the treatment of HLCM and the same phenomena are different. Uh, and um, uh, of course there is the um, uh, myectomy uh, described by Dr. Morrill uh, in 1975 which either can be done through the uh, aortic valve, especially if the, the obstruction is uh, at a very high level, uh, close to the aortic valve apparatus. Then there is a transmitral approach uh, where you can uh, um, go through uh, uh, the mitral valve, dissecting the anterior uh, uh, leaflet from the um, mitral valve analysis as described by uh, Carpentier and through this kind of approach through the mitral valve you can transect and perform the myectomy. Um, a, a combined approach through the aortic valve and correcting uh, the subvalvular apparatus and dissecting the papillary muscles has been described by Dr. Schoendufer at all um, in circulation uh, by freeing the papillary muscles in the LBOT. Um, a very old approach is the um, uh, myectomy and the mitral valve replacement uh, favored by Dr. Cooley and others. Lately, um, uh, Dr. Sano has described a technique which is a, uh, a myectomy uh, approach through the right uh, ventricle incising incising the septum and through the septum a very deep approach uh, into the left ventricle as possible and the patch placed on the right side of the right ventricle will enlarge the LVOT. 
but can also mention a transapical approach, which is not shown on the slide, uh, but this has been described by the group of the Mayo Clinic um, by uh, Jeff Hartzler and his colleagues. Um, the uh, surgical principles for the uh, systolic anterior motion and mitral regurgitation are described on this slide and um, it shows how the anterior leaflet um, is augmented uh, by uh, <coughs> the papillary muscles, how the anterior leaflet is uh, kind of retended uh, and a, uh, you can perform a retention pla a plastic, you can perform, as described by Dr. Uh, leaflet, a partial le leaflet uh, uh, resuspension and our approach, which will be shown later on, on the, uh, in the video, is a, a complete leaflet respension of the anterior leaflet by cutting all missile, miss and malaligned uh, cords to the anterior leaflet. Um, in our approach, which will be shown in the video later, um, the idea is to cut all uh, the cords which connect to the anterior leaflet and you can open uh, the anterior leaflet inside the atrium, perform a transmitral uh, myectomy on the septum and the second step. This, the second step is then to measure the distance from uh, the papillary muscle connection to the um, leaflet of the posterior leaflet uh, or respectfully to the, mi uh, to the mitral valve annulus to, sec to select um, the artificial cord length exactly and to allow the anterior leaflet to uh, coapt at the level of the annulus um, with the posterior leaflet. The next slide shows you the implantation of these caudal uh, loops um, to both uh, papillary muscles um, each loop connects um, cordae at the measured length. Um, it most likely will be in between 22 to 26. Um, it would be depending on the patient's anatomy um, and to, to allow for the f uh, free closing of uh, the anterior leaflet. We, we would um, um, go for a complete resuspension of the anterior leaflet, um, dividing um, two uh, uh, set of cords attachment to the right and to the left side, allowing for eight artificial caudal connection to the anterior leaflet. And we would avoid a crossing of the midline from the one or the other side uh, to really align the leaflet. Mm -hmm. The, this video shows you now a typical example where such malalignment of the anterior leaflet um, was uh, uh, the case for the severe hypertrophy. It reflects the case which you have seen in the uh, uh, beginning on the MRI and um, the slide shows you uh, how all the cords um, to the anterior leaflet are dissected. Um, and you can see, and we uh, cut all the cords so that there remains only a free margin, and then uh, the myectomy. Um, the, after the anterior leaflet is flipped uh, towards the septum, the myectomy deep into the ventricle can be performed to this approach, beginning at the aortic valve um, down into deep into the ventricle. Um, it is started with an um, incision with a knife and then uh, completed uh, with the scissors. This next slide uh, shows you the idea. The left uh, slide shows uh, the typical LVOT uh, uh, obstruction of this case with the severe SEM causing uh, the severe stenosis in the LVOT. And the right slide shows you after the intervention I have here just shown you in the video by freeing the anterior leaflet and um, connecting with it with neocords 
on the, uh, on the right side, the full opening of the anterior leaflet towards the left atrium is um, nicely shown and um, also the coordination with the posterior uh, leaflet at the level of the mitral valve annulus and the LVOT is free and open, there is no further turbulences and you also can recognize um, the uh, deep uh, myectomy be performed uh, in combination with the um, <coughs> new alignment of the mitral valve. In this slide we can uh, demonstrate um, <coughs> the intraoperative TEE of this patient after uh, the, the um, uh, mitral valve repair. It shows the free motion of the anterior leaf, it shows the connection to the to the neocords, and <coughs> it uh, uh, there is only very minimal central mitral regurgitation, and um, the LVOT obstruction is no longer present. The next uh, video clip uh, confirms um, um, uh, the success of that repair in the MRI post-operative imaging uh, showing again uh, the, the different um, uh, position of the anterior leaflet which is now closing very nicely with the posterior leaflet and the very widely open um, LVOT without any... Um. Uh, finally, I, I like to conclude that this technique of uh, transmitral myectomy and um, the, um, the disconnection of the uh, native cords and the implantation of neocords uh, leads to a significant uh, extension of the left ventricular outflow tract. It may correct uh, mitral regurgitation and you certainly can eliminate SEM. In some cases it may be recommendable to also use a partial band to support the mitral annulus if there is a narrowing. I would not recommend a complete ring because a complete ring may um, narrow the anterior posterior dimension too much in, uh, in, and can obstruct the LVOT again. So if you need a, a kind of um, annual pasty, you rather would go with a partial band. So thank you very much for allowing us to present this technique uh, and I hope I could explain uh, the technique in this case example uh, uh, very well. As you, as uh, been mentioned, there are different techniques to solve a problem. I think HOCM is a very uh, different uh, field in every patient and you have to adapt the technique to the uh, pathology present in each patient and thank you very much um, and goodbye.